I'm continuing my reading, and what I'm doing in this series is read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume. So now that I have reached the time of the judges, I will be skipping around more as I move along. Right now, I will be reading Judges, Chapter 1. Judah, Simeon, and Joseph continue to conquer Canaanites. Remnants of Canaanites remain in the land of Judah, Manasseh, Ephraim, Zebulon, Asher, Naphtali, and Dan. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they found Adon Ad and they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done. So God hath requited, hath requited me, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, and had taken it, and smitten it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. So he's saying he he did this to 70 other kings. He cut off their thumbs and toes, and so now he's recognizing the poetic justice, right? And he's taken to Jerusalem. Now this says Judah conquered Jerusalem, but Jerusalem was given to Benjamin originally. So there's a little bit of a... Uh, the borders between tribes don't seem to be as stable as they probably should have been. Anyways, verse 9. And afterwards the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain, and in the south, and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kirjath Arba. And they slew Shishai, and Ahiman, and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir before was Kirjath Zephyr. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kirjath Zephyr, and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it. And he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field. And she lighted from, her, from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land. Give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. So that's just a repeat of the story. That, that, that same story was told back in the book of Joshua. So this is it's actually, according to this, that story takes place after Joshua's death. So... <laughs> Excuse me. That's interesting. That that it, it makes sense that the book of Joshua said this is all happening, but remember that this is the same Caleb that did this. So if we're lining up the timeline, this the conquering of Kirjath Zephyr seems to be after Joshua's death. Anyways, this is verse 16 now. And the children of the Kenite Moses' father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad. And they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. Also Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ascalon and the with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled 
thence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. Now we got some confusion here. So first of all, we have in verse 16, it calls Moses' father-in-law the the Kenite, which he was Midian, so I don't understand that. There's just a lot of questions here. Now, Othniel, who married uh, Caleb's daughter, Aksa, he is the son of Kenaz, and Kenaz is Caleb's younger brother. Obviously a different Kenaz than the title of Kenite given to Moses' father-in-law, who is Jethro. But we also read here that Benjamin could not defeat the Jebusites in Jerusalem. And yet earlier we are told that Judah fought against Jerusalem and burnt it to the ground. So That makes me think that there might have been two different places called Jerusalem. The main city, Jerusalem, was in Benjamin, but there might have been a smaller town, a smaller city in the land of Judah that was also called Jerusalem. Because how else would Judah destroy Jerusalem, but Benjamin failed to take it? And because it says the, the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. Interesting. Anyways, let us continue. Verse 22. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel, and the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to describe Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man came, come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Shew us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will shew thee mercy. And when he eschewed them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword, but let go, But they let go the man and all his family. And the man went into the land of the Hittites, and built a city, and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. Now that reminds me of one other thing I wanted to mention. I like that. This is kind of a similar story as the story of Rahab in Jericho. She helped the spies, they, save, they spare her and her family. Here, this man helps the spies, and they save him and his family. So, But it did say earlier Moses, that the children of the, of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of D- Judah. So the descendants of Jethro came to live with Israel. I wanted to mention that. Later on, when Midian is attacking Israel and oppressing Israel, and they're all, the Jethro and his family came to live with Israel. They joined themselves to the people of God. On the other hand, this guy here, he went out to the Hittites and rebuilt a city, naming it Luz again, because that was the name of Bethel originally, was Luz. So he was spared by the people, and he went and he built himself a new city outside of the land of, of Israel. So, verse 27. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and her towns, nor Tanak and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of uh, Iblium and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did, neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalal. But the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor, the, nor of Alab, nor of Akzib, nor of Helba nor of Aphek, nor of Rahab. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Bethanath. But he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley, 
the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres, in Ijalon, and in Shalbim. Yet the, le- yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became tributaries. And the coast of the Amorites was from the goings up of Akrabim, from the rock and upward. So there's a couple of things to note here. I do note that it does not state that Asher made tributaries of the Canaanites living in their land, just as they lived together. So there were many Canaanites that were not driven out that were supposed to be driven out. And it seems that after Joshua's death, Israel, I mean, Judah went out, and Simeon, they went and conquered a lot. Uh, Benjamin tried. The uh, Joseph, he went out and conquered a bit. But not everybody did, and it seems like they they got kind of comfortable in what they already had and didn't want to go back out to war. I can't say I blame. I mean, war is not a fun thing, but they didn't complete what they were supposed to do. Now, I will also say, it says here that Judah conquered Gaza, Ascalon, and Ekron. These are all cities of the Philistines. But it says that they were they took the mountains, but they could not take the valley. And the valley, this this would refer to, I believe, the coastlands along the Mediterranean. Because that is where the Philistines maintained a, a, a hole, maintained their independence from Israel, was the uh, coastlands along the Mediterranean. And so they were. They drove the Philistines out of the mountains and down to the coast, but were unable to fully conquer them. They <clears throat> said they, you know, it. Uh, they took the cities, Gaza, Ascalon, and Ekron, but apparently they didn't hold them for uh, for too long, because those cities were back in the hands of the Philistines by the time of King David, at the latest. So, <clears throat> but the biggest thing here, I think, is that we get the idea. I like that you know Jethro's family comes and joins Israel, but Israel is becoming complacent. They are not going out and doing what God told them to do. They are supposed to be conquering these people, and instead, they're not just supposed to be conquering them, they're supposed to be utterly destroying them, wiping them off the face of the earth, but instead they choose to set them to tribute. They don't want to go back to war, but they are powerful enough that the Canaanites pay tribute. But this will come as this will be a hard a, a, a problem for them later on. We will see that because they didn't destroy the Canaanites completely, it causes severe problems for the rest of their time. But we'll get into that in the next chapter. See. You.